everyone. My name is Hannah, and I'm the Events and Programs Assistant here at Save the Harbor, Save the Bay. I'm here today to talk to you about birds, and luckily we have a lot of really amazing sea, water, and shore birds all over Boston Harbor, on our Harbor Islands, and in Massachusetts Bay. Even though we're all staying indoors, spring has still arrived outside, which means a lot of migratory birds that left Boston for the winter are back. You've probably heard them singing outside your window. And today we're gonna talk about some of those birds and what they sound like so you can bird watch on your own time from your home or while you're on a walk outside. One common bird you've probably already heard without knowing it is the black capped chickadee. These tiny little birds hop around on the ground or on short trees and they get their name because they look like they're wearing little black hats. If you think you see a chickadee, listen for the telltale sound of them calling their own name. Doesn't it sound like they're saying chickadee dee dee dee? The birds use this as an alarm when they see a predator and they can actually change the duration of the call to signal how close, large, or dangerous the predator is. Birds actually make a lot of different songs and calls because that's their language. It's how they communicate, just like how we talk. The chickadee actually has at least 16 different calls that all mean different things. Another type of call you may hear from out your window right now is a call that male chickadees use to impress potential mates. It sounds like a two-tone whistle, and it's especially noticeable right now in springtime. One of my other favorite local birds is the eastern bluebird. For a long time, these cute little birds were in trouble because humans were overusing bad chemicals in their habitats. Luckily, we got our act together, and we actually started restoring their habitat, so they're doing much better today. They make this beautiful trilling call that sounds like this. Another bird that might be taking up residence on your street is the American Robin. They are instantly recognizable by their red chest and spindly legs, so you've definitely seen them before. And they sound like this. If you live near a lake or another kind of fresh water, you're more likely to see birds like the common merganser or the ruddy duck. And you're more likely to see these birds before you hear them because unlike the songbirds I just talked about, they're not noisy. And while we all know what a duck sounds like, they have a special call that males use to communicate with their mates. Sounds like this. The ruddy duck is also pretty easy to spot. All you have to do is look for their telltale blue beak, which is a pretty uncommon color for a North American bird. So it makes them pretty special. Just like all duck species, ruddy ducks also quack, but they have another call that's unique to them as well. It sounds like this. We also have a lot of coastal birds nearby that love to enjoy the entire Massachusetts coast. One of those is the double-crested cormorant, which is a type of seabird that hunts for fish by diving into the water. They're also not particularly noisy birds, but when they do say something, this is what they sound like. Both Eastern Bluebirds and American Robins love birdhouses and bird feeders put out by humans. So that's what I'm gonna show you how to make today. We're going to design our very own bird feeder or beard house, depending on if you do wanna put bird seed in it. It's gonna look like an owl. So let's get started. So first let's go over some materials. You're going to need a carton of some sort. I'm using this orange juice box, but a milk carton or other cardboard carton that vaguely looks like this will do. You're also going to need paintbrushes and paint in any color you like. Waterproof enamel is your best bet, but acrylic will also work. Just make sure if you notice that the paint is wearing off or the bird feeder is becoming damaged, that you bring it inside so it doesn't become litter. You're also going to need a scissors or a small knife, craft glue, a black Sharpie or marker, a popsicle stick or a colored pencil you don't mind losing to act as a wooden rod, and then wire, twine, or other type of thin rope so you can hang your bird feeder outside. So the first thing we need to do is paint our cartons. I decided to paint mine green with polka dots just to be fun, but you can pick any color or decoration you like. You have to wait until it's completely dry before we move on to the next step. So I will be back once my carton is dry to let you know what's next. My carton is dry. Now we're going to start making it look like an owl by giving it some wing flaps on the side. So we're going to use our knife or our scissors and we're going to cut just like this, leaving the top part connected so you get those little wings.
There's the first wing. And there's number two. You can pull them out a little bit so that they stay flappy if you just bend it a tiny bit and then they'll stick out a little more. All right, the next step is to cut out a area at the front of the container. This is where the birds are actually going to be able to eat the bird seed if you're choosing to put bird seed in here. This is gonna be sort of a rounded rectangular shape like a door. But don't throw away that piece you cut out because we're going to use this later to make a beak. All right, this is what your owl should look like so far. Now we're gonna add the owl's face. So take that small piece of rectangular cardboard that you used earlier and cut a triangle. Now we're going to add the face. So you'll wanna take the triangle that you cut out and your marker and draw eyes right under the um, cap here. And then you'll wanna attach the triangle facing down right under those eyes. I'm gonna turn mine over so it's white so that it stands out against the rest of the card. The last thing you're going to do is you're going to take that popsicle stick or um, colored pencil and you're going to insert it into the bottom of the bird feeder so that it gives the birds a place to stand while they're having lunch. So to do this, you're just going to cut a small slit right at the bottom and use a little glue to make sure that your stick stays in there. Once you have your stick in place, the last thing you want to do, if you do want to hang it outside, is to punch a hole through the top of the carton and attach that string. And just like that, your bird feeder is done. If you're interested in learning how to make homemade bird seed to put in it, I'm going to show you how to do that next. If there's one thing seed eating birds love more than anything else, it is sunflower seeds. So that's something you can easily put in your bird feeder if you're looking to attract them. You can also put some dried fruit. Make sure you chop it up into really small pieces. Some birds really love a good fruit snack. Other things you can put in, um, uh, peanuts. You can dice tiny peanuts. You can also put white millet or cracked corn if you have it. Any combination of those things will definitely be a tasty treat for any of the birds in your neighborhood. Make sure you're only putting things in your bird feeder that you know birds can eat. That means no bread, no candy, as much as you think they may like it. Thank you for joining me on this fun bird adventure. If you're interested in birding or learning about more local bird species, I've left a few links in the description for you to check out some birds that might be living near you. I'd love to know what birds you're hearing and seeing in your neighborhood, so feel free to drop a comment or get in touch on social media. Bye!